this video, we will go over the concepts that were in part one of the video with some examples. We will go through all the information that a system of equations provides. For each example, we will solve the system using the A inverse B method or the RREF method. We will identify the solution set or state that there is not a solution set or that the solution sets the empty set. We will interpret the solution graphically in terms of planes or spaces intersecting and also as vectors. We will identify the pivot columns, the free variables. We will state whether the coefficient columns are linearly dependent or linearly independent. And we will also identify the null space. In this example, there is one unique solution. That is, there's only one point in the solution set. When there's only one point in the solution set, you are able to use the A inverse B method. So you could go through the elementary row operations and actually find your inverse by hand, or you could put the coefficient matrix in the calculator. In this sense, it would be a three by three coefficient matrix. I put it in the calculator as matrix A. Then you would put your answer column, the six negative two eight, as a three by one column vector. I called it matrix B. Then on the home screen, you can call up matrix A raise it to the minus one power, but when you're doing that, you're really running a program that finds the inverse of that matrix, and then we're multiplying by the column matrix B. Notice it gives us a solution. X equals negative 3.7, Y equals negative 3.9, and Z equals 1.5. If there was not a unique solution, I would have gotten an error message on the calculator. The same calculation can also be completed in the decimals matrix calculator. And once again, if there's not a unique solution, you'll get an error message because the inverse of the coefficient matrix would not exist. We also could use the row reduce echelon form. And in that case, you would make a three by four matrix, the augmented matrix, augmented with the six negative two eight column. And we would do those same elementary row operations on it or have a program on the calculator or decimals to do that for us. And notice when you have one unique solution, the coefficient matrix are REFs to the identity matrix. So notice I have my columns now that were the coefficient matrix are now forming the identity matrix. And I read that as one times X equals negative 3.7, one times Y equals negative 3.9, and one times Z equals 1.5. There are two geometric ways to interpret solution sets to linear systems of equations. One is by looking at the equations as spaces. In this case, um, each equation is representing a plane in three-dimensional space, so a two-dimensional plane in three-dimensional space. Um, you can see the equation 3x minus 4y plus z equals 6 is represented by the pink-colored plane slicing through space. The 2x minus y plus z equals negative 2 is represented by the green plane that's then slicing through the pink plane into space. And then 4x minus 7y minus 3z equals 8 is the other more reddish colored plane. The three planes, in this case, intersect all together at only one point. There's only one point where all three of them agree. So the green and the pink plane are intersecting in a line, and the reddish and the pink plane are intersecting in a line. And the green and the reddish plane are intersecting in a line, but all three of them only intersect in that one point where x is negative 3.7, y is negative 3.9, and z is 1.5. A second geometric interpretation of our solution set is to look at the system of equations in terms of column vectors. So we look at all of the coefficients of x, 3, 2, 4, as a column vector. We look at the coefficients of y, negative 4, negative 1, negative 7, as a column vector. And then the third column vector would be the coefficients of z, 1, 1, and negative 3. The solution set then is a set of scalars that can multiply those column vectors to equal our answer column vector, 6, negative 2, 8. So the negative 3.7 is the scalar on the x column vector. The negative 3.9 is the scalar on the y column vector. And the 1.5 is the scalar for the z column vector. So notice if you take negative 3.7 times 3 and then you subtract 3.9 times negative 4 and you add 1.5 times 1, you get 6. Negative 3.7 times 2 minus 3.9 times negative 1 plus 1.5 times 1 equals negative 2. Negative 3.7 times 4 minus 3.9 times negative 7 added to 1.5 times negative 3 equals our 8. 
So we're creating a linear combination of the column vectors using those scalars. We're the first scalar in our, our solution point is the scalar that multiplies the first column. The second number in our solution point multiplies the second column and the third scalar in our solution point multiplies the third column. You can see in the diagram, we graph the three original column vectors and then we're showing how you create the path to the answer vector. So six negative to eight is a green vector coming out from the origin. And the first vector, three, two, four, is a black vector and it's shown multiplied by negative 3.7. So the longer black vector, negative 3.7 times three, two, four is graphed. Then at the end point of that, we stack negative 3.9 times negative 4, negative 1, negative 7. So then you're adding negative 3.7 times the first column, minus 3.9 times the second column vector. That gets you to that higher point where the red vector then gets tapped on, and the red vector is 1.5 times the third column. So when I take negative 3.7 times the first, and then I add on to it the vector, negative 3.9 times the second, and then I add on to it the vector 1.5 times the third, notice I land at the end point of 6, negative 2, 8. When you have one unique solution, your column vectors of your coefficient matrix will span all of Rn. Our column vectors are in R3. They were in the third dimension. They are independent of each other, and they will span all of R3. You can see that when we try to graph the plane that contains two of them, the third vector does not lie in that plane. So all three of them are then pointing in three different directions. You can see the vector 1, 1, negative 3 does not lie in the plane of the other two. So these three vectors span all of R3. That means any other vector in R3, hence any point in R3, can be found by a linear combination of these three vectors. And again, that will be true for any system that has one unique solution. The coefficient column vectors will span all of Rn. In this example, we found the solution set finding that there was a unique point and finding that unique point. We interpreted the solution set geometrically or graphically in terms of intersecting planes and also in terms of vectors. We identified that the three coefficient columns are linearly independent and they span all of our three. Thus, the rank of the column vectors is three. It spans a three-dimensional space, so the rank is three. When we REF the augmented matrix, we can see that where the coefficient matrix was is now the identity matrix. Hence, there are three pivot columns. Each column contains a leading one. Since we only had three coefficient columns in the first place and all three of them are pivot columns. There are zero free variables. There are no columns left over to be free variables. And our null space only contains a zero vector, zero, zero, zero. Whenever there's a unique solution, your null space is always only going to contain the zero vector. In this example, we'll go through all of the information about a system which has no solution. Here we have a three by three equation. We have three equations, three variables. And if we try to solve by the A inverse B method, we put in the coefficient matrix as a three by three, and then we put for B a three by one column matrix, and we try to call up on the home screen A inverse times B, and our calculator gives us an error message. It tells us we have a singular matrix. That is because the coefficient matrix does not have an inverse. It's not invertible. It's a singular matrix. That's a singular matrix means a matrix that does not have an inverse. So it gives us this error message. We don't get a solution to our system. Now, getting that error message on your calculator does not necessarily mean that the system has no solution. It means that the inverse of the coefficient matrix does not exist. But the inverse will not exist if there's no solution, but also if there's infinitely many solutions. So just getting that error on the calculator does not mean that there's no solution. But if there is no solution, you will definitely get that error message on your calculator. So then we have to, you know, investigate by some other method. So we are REF the augmented matrix. And when we see the completely row reduced version of the augmented matrix, we notice the third line reads 0 times x plus 0 times y plus 0 times z equals 1. But 0 cannot equal 1. Hence, that's our discrepancy. That's what tells us that this system has no solution. Just because there's no solution does not mean that there isn't information about the system that can be investigated. If we do look at this from the point of view of 
the spaces intersecting, again, we were working with three equations and three variables. So each equation does represent a plane, a two-dimensional plane in three-dimensional space. So the three planes do not all intersect in any common points. So two planes at a time intersect, but all three do not intersect in any common points. The vector interpretation for this case in which there is no solution means that the three column vectors that make up the coefficient matrix do not span all of R3. Those three vectors span only a two-dimensional plane in R3. The diagram shows the red, blue, and black vector are the column vectors 1, 1, 3, 1, negative 1, 1, and negative 1, 1, and negative 1, and they all lie in the same plane. That plane does not include the vector 7, 5, negative 1. So it's not possible to create a vector path involving only those three vectors to reach 7, 5, negative 1. That is, there is no linear combination of those three vectors that equal 7, 5, negative 1. If the three vectors did span all of R3, then there would definitely be a vector path to that vector, but they don't. They only span a plane, and the plane does not include what we were trying to set equal to the equations equal to. We were trying to set the equations equal to the vector 7, 5, negative 1. So that's the vector interpretation in this case where there is no solution. Here we are still working with our current coefficient matrix, but we have created the homogeneous system by setting all of the equations equal to zero because we're going to talk about the null space. Remember, the null space is the solution set when all of your equations are set equal to zero. Notice when we are REF, the augmented matrix, we end up with the same RREF coefficient matrix that we had earlier. The only difference between the previous screen is the 0, 0, 0 in the fourth column because we've set all the equations equal to zero. So notice there are two pivot columns. There are two columns with leading ones, the first and second column. And there is one free variable. The third column is not a pivot column. Instead, it, it's a column that's illustrating that there's a free variable. So the coefficient vectors span only a two-dimensional space. Thus, the coefficient matrix has rank two. Okay, they span a two-dimensional space, it has rank two. The null space is a one-dimensional line in R3. And reading the first row, the first row says that X must be zero, but the second row reads that Y minus Z equals zero, hence Y and Z must be the same value. So if you take all points for which X is zero and Y and Z are the same, you get a line in three-dimensional space. So the null space is one-dimensional, the coefficient matrix spans a two-dimensional space, two dimensions plus one dimensions equals the three dimensions that we started with. It is good to note here that no homogeneous system, a system in which all the equations are set equal to zero, will ever have the empty set as its solution set because the zero vector is always going to be a solution. In this case, besides zero, zero, zero being a solution, every point on the line in which x was zero and y and z are the same are a solution setting all of these equations equal to zero. So just again note, a homogeneous system is never going to have the empty set as its solution set because the null space will always at least have the zero vector in it. In this example, we're going to look at a situation in which there are infinitely many solutions to our system of equations. If you tried to solve this system by making a three by three coefficient matrix and then a three by one column matrix of the answers one, six, 13, then applying a home screen, the A inverse times B method, to come up with your solution, you would get an error message telling you that you have a singular matrix. That is because the coefficient matrix does not have an inverse. But this time, instead of our solution set being in the empty set, there actually is a solution. And if we are REF the augmented matrix, and we're showing that work done on the graphing calculator, we get the row reduced augmented matrix shown in light blue. And we read that first row as 1 times x minus 11 ninths times z equals 10 ninths. And then the second row, 1 times y minus 5 ninths times z equals 11 ninths. So we do have a solution. And in fact, um, there are infinitely many solutions. Every point on a line is our solution set. These three planes intersect in a line. And every point on that line is a solution to the system of equations. If you plug the coordinates of any point on the line into the original set of equations, you will get the left side of each equation equally in the right side of each equation. And again, the line can be described by using z as the independent variable. So pick any value for z, then you compute x by taking 10 ninths plus 11 ninths times that value you chose for z. 
using the same value you just chose for z, y would be computed by taking a negative 11 ninths and adding 5 ninths times z. And then z coordinate would be whatever value that you chose. Interpreting this example with vectors means that any point on that line going through the plane can be used as a set of scalars to create a linear combination of the coefficient columns to equal the vector 1, 6, 13. So for example, if we let z equal 1, then x would have to be 2 and 1 third or 7 thirds, and y would have to be negative 2 thirds to be on the line that we're talking about. If I use 7 thirds or 2 and 1 third times the first vector minus 2 thirds times the second vector plus 1 times the third vector, I get the vector 1, 6, 13. You can see in the diagram here, the very dark green vector is 7 thirds times the first column vector of the coefficient matrix. And then tacked onto that is negative 2 thirds times the second coefficient column vector. And then tacked on to the end of that resultant is 1 times the third coefficient column vector. And we land at the terminal point of the vector 1, 6, 13. We could have chosen any other point on the line and we would have had a set of scalars that create a linear combination to equal 1, 6, 13. For example, if you let z equal negative 6, then a point on the line would have x coordinate negative 56 ninths and y coordinate negative 41 ninths. And those work also as scalar multiples to create a vector that equals 1, 6, 13. I didn't draw a picture of that one, but if you do the arithmetic, you can see that you arrive at 1, 6, 13. Looking at the RREF version of the augmented matrix, we can see that the coefficient part of the matrix has two pivot columns, the first column and the second column. The three vectors in the coefficient matrix span a two-dimensional plane in R3. So the coefficient matrix has rank two. It spans a two-dimensional space. There is one free variable. The third column is showing us that we have one free variable. So z serves as the one independent variable in the line that served as our solution set. The coefficient columns are linearly dependent. That means that one or more of them can be written as a linear combination of the other ones. And these three column vectors span a two-dimensional plane in R3, not all of R3. That leaves one free variable, and so our solution set was a one-dimensional one line, and when we find our null space by setting all of the equations equal to zero, we also get a one-dimensional line. Notice when you RREF the augmented matrix with all of the equations set equal to zero, we basically get the same RREF matrix except for the fourth column is all zeros. So my null space is a line in which the slopes will be the same as it was for the other solution set. It only differs by the constants. The constants are now all zeros. So my null space is the one-dimensional line. Pick any value you want for z. Calculate x by taking 11 ninths times that z. And calculate y by taking 5 ninths times that z. So the rank of the coefficient matrix is 2. The dimension of the null space is 1. Notice 2 plus 1 is equal to 3, and that was the same number of columns that we started with. In our next example, we're going to work with a higher dimension system. We can't draw pictures of planes and vectors because we live in a three-dimensional world, so I can't draw a picture of a fifth dimension system, but you can kind of apply the same concepts in the lower dimensions to the higher dimensions. If you were going to solve this one, if it had a single point solution, and it might have a single point solution, you could solve it using the A inverse B method by putting your 5 by 5 coefficient matrix into your calculator or decimals, and then multiplying the inverse of that coefficient matrix times your answer vector. In this case, our answer vector would be a 5 by 1 containing the values 32, negative 12, 31, 32, and 51. However, this particular system does not have a single point solution, so if we do try that, we will get that same error message that we've been getting before, that we have a singular matrix because the coefficient matrix for this particular example does not have an inverse. So to solve this system, we are going to, again, rely on our REF, and so the augmented matrix is the 5 by 6 matrix in which the first five columns are representing the coefficients and the sixth column is representing the answer values that are on the right side of the equal sign. 
when we RREF the augmented matrix, we end up with the following five by six matrix that is completely reduced. And we can read the first row as one times X sub one plus one times X of four equals four. The second row can be read as one times X of two plus one times X of five equals three. The third row can be read as 1 times x sub 3 plus 1 times x sub 4 plus 1 times x sub 5 equals 5. That will give us our solution set. Rewriting the equations that result from our RREF version of the augmented matrix, we get the solution set x sub 1 is 4 minus x sub 4, x sub 2 is 3 minus x sub 5, x sub 3 is 5 minus x sub 4 minus x sub 5, and then you choose any values you want for x sub 4 and x sub 5. They are the two independent or free variables. So my solution set is a two-dimensional space in R5. Any point in this two-dimensional space can be used as coefficients to form a linear combination of the coefficient matrix column vectors, and we will end up obtaining the five-dimensional vector 32, negative 12, 31, 32, 51. So for example, pick one for x sub four and two for x sub five. Then x sub one would be four minus one or three, x sub two would be three minus two or one, x sub three would be five minus one minus two or two. If I use those as scalars, and create a linear combination, notice I will get the resulting vector. I will get 32 for x sub 1, negative 12 for x sub 2, 31 for x sub 3, 32 for x sub 4, and 51 for x sub 5. So that's an example of choosing a point in this two-dimensional solution space. There's infinitely many points, and I picked one of them, and you could pick other values for x sub 4 and x sub 5 and create a set of scalars and go through the arithmetic and see that you do create a linear combination that gives you your resulting vector. If you were going to interpret the solution set in terms of planes, you could consider each of the five equations as a plane in five-dimensional space. It's not going to be the same idea as, you know, the idea of like a sheet of paper extending out like we see planes in R3, but all the variables are raised to the first power. There is no algebraic function that would make these surfaces curved. And so you could sort of picture what would be a five-dimensional piece of paper. So you have five of those surfaces and they are intersecting in a two-dimensional space within R5. We can notice from our RREF to augmented matrix that we have three pivot columns. They happen to be the first three columns. Don't always think that the pivot columns are going to be stacked in the front of your um, augmented matrix they can be scattered throughout the coefficient columns. In this case, they happen to be the first three vectors. So the first three vectors of the original matrix can be referred to as the pivot columns, or you can refer to them as the pivot columns when you look at the augmented matrix. So we have three pivot columns. That means that our original set of five vectors spans a three-dimensional space in R5. The rank of the original five coefficient vectors is three. We have three pivot columns, so the rank of the original five coefficient vectors is three. They span a three-dimensional space in R5. There are two free variables, x sub 4 and x sub 5, are serving as our independent or free variables. The null space, again, is the solution set when you set the equations equal to zero, and it will also be a two-dimensional space in R5 with x sub 4 and x sub 5 as the free variables. And notice the slopes are the same as in the other solution set, the null space solution set only differs from the other by the constants. Those constants that were 3, 4, and 5 are now all zeros. So notice three pivot columns plus two free variables equals five. That's how many original coefficient columns we had. The rank of the original five coefficient vectors is three. They span a three-dimensional space in R5, but the solution sets to the systems span a two-dimensional space in R5. So in this video, we summarize the information that can be obtained from systems of equations. We looked at an example in which there was a unique solution. You are only able to use the A inverse times B method if there is a unique solution. One single point is a solution. Otherwise, you need to rely on row reducing the augmented matrix to the final completely RREF version of the augmented matrix. We looked at how to interpret the solution sets in terms of intersecting planes as well as linear combinations of vectors. 
And we focused at first on three-dimensional systems of equations because we were able to draw pictures of the solution sets and the interpretations, but those ideas extend into higher dimensions even though we aren't able to draw pictures of them. Okay, well at this point, um, it's a good place for you to go look at the practice problems and study back over these ideas.